Hello there, 585ers. We have about five minutes before 530. This is Monday, June the 12th. I'm going to uh, do a little bit of backtracking tonight because, as frankly, we ran out of time last week. Well, we didn't run out of time. I got run out of a classroom where I was trying to record in. So we are going to go through this Module 3 quickly, but then I'm going to stop and slow down and show you Go Animate in much more detail. And then we will go into Module 4, the Irresistibly Engaging. And we'll, again, take our time looking at it because I want you to understand what it's about and then how to use it. Hello, Ashley. How are you feeling, dearest? Can you hear me okay? You can either text me back or just talk to me, either way. Well, I'm glad you're wonderful today. I really, really am. And I hope sometime as this thing carries on, uh, that you'll be able to come down to campus and just say hello. I would really, really enjoy meeting you and just sitting around and having a chat. And you're the one who's kind of uh, framed what we're going to do tonight. Good, good. You're the one who's sort of framed what we're going to do tonight because we did not get to the Glanimate last week. And like I said, because I got thrown out of the classroom that I was trying to record in. And I had some issues here in my office with the uh, browsers uh, not behaving well with Collaborate. So did a lot of rebuilding of things, did a lot of rechecking of things, and now I'm back in my office, which frankly is where I would like to be the entire time. Um, I just had a student pop in here today, and she kind of backed out into the hall, and she said, my goodness, there's too much stuff in there. Well, it's not like there's a lot of junk in here. There's just a lot of technology sitting in here. All right. Let's pick up again Module 3, where we have started designing our wiki, which is going to be the, if you, you know, a term would be the e-portfolio for the class. I'm going to slide this over. Now, actually, if you need me, I'm going to be moving this out of the way, and it probably is going to cover up the chat window. So you can either text me to the phone, because I've got it right back here behind me, or just yell. <laughs> Turn on your talk button and yell at me. So what we're doing in Module 3, we were creating a wiki, and we used a online wonderful online product called Wiki Spaces. And as I explained to you, the reason why I like Wiki Spaces is because it is such a very, very simple, simple um, online development program. I, I just can't tell you enough uh, how much I like it mainly because it is what's called flat HTML, and there's just not a whole lot that you're doing inside of it when you're using it. It has some things you need to be aware of. Those things have to do with um, how Flash and Java are enabled through a browser. So those are things that we have to be aware of. Now, here I am. I'm in my little... Wikispace sandbox. Uh, and you can see I've got Go Sir Ken loaded in here. So let me go ahead and blow him out so I can kind of show you what I need to show you. Remember, you can't leave a page in your Wikispace without something in it uh, because the Wikispace is true HTML and it is connected to the web. And the web is basically going, you cannot leave a page empty. It has to have something in it. 
So I'm going to come over here to settings, and I just want you to see. Let's go over this real fast. So under general last week, we made sure that we turned off the classroom, which is the default, and we turned on the wiki. We made sure that we turned off discussions for this particular. We don't need them. You can allow search engines to index you or not. Uh, you have security through obscurity, so this one's kind of a wash. You really don't need it. This one, though, you do need. Force web browsers into SSL. Secure. It's your secure socket layer. This is how we make sure that the websites that we're using are safe and we don't have any problems. And then we told you to save that. And then the big one is right here under permissions. You need to make sure that you make your wiki protected. Now, you can't see it here because I've already jumped through that hoop. But if you're doing it for the first time, there's a link up here that says verify your account. Jump through that hoop and get your account verified, and then turn it on to protect it. If you can't get the protected to work, you have two choices. Number one, you can make it public where everybody can see it and everybody can edit it, but again, security through obscurity. Or you can make it private, and then what you have to do is let me know that you've done that, and then give me the URL where it is, and then I'll request to join, and you can make me a member. It's much easier just to make it protected. Protected means I can see it, but I can't do anything with it. Uh, was there anything else? Look and feel. You can do your themes and colors. You can make it really kind of cool. You know, it depends upon how much you want to do with this. Okay. Uh, also, last time we talked, we talked about the fact that wikis are, you can customize them as much as you want. You, um, and you can come in and change that customization anytime you want. All right, I'm going to pop back out of here and go back to my home. And as I said, you see how it wouldn't let me do it? <laughs> I'm going to come in here and I'm going to blow off Sir Ken because the next thing I want to play with is, let's see, we were supposed to make a word cloud and a Vokey. So if you look at the word cloud, I think the directions when I showed you how to do that in the video are pretty clear. The Vokey um, is a little bit screwy. Uh, Vokey has gotten greedy, frankly. And so, you see, it recognizes me as a user. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can log in as me, which is the SBSwan, et cetera, et cetera. And then your password is ULIT241. And you can log in. You see what it says? That it's being in use. Now, if you log out all other devices, log in, it'll let you do this. Now, what happens with this is you kind of get into a queue with, or get into a little push and shove war with other people. If you use your own username and password that I have right down here, what it'll do is it'll let you in, and then you can create. You don't have to worry about all that. Here's the point I want to make. So here's a, a guy that was in our 689 class. Oh, here here I am. There's Steve. Steve 585. So Steve 585 has now been created. If he wants to go back in and mess with it, he would click here on the pencil. And he is allowed now to go back into his avatar and create it. And I can change anything and everything at this point. I am, when I'm finished, though, I'm still going to publish. And it's taking a sweet time. I am then going to get the embed code, which is this right here. When I click on that, it gives me a couple of choices. The best way to do it is to grab the flash base. 
copy all of this code right here. A couple of ways you can do it. You can do a select all, and you can do a copy. Notice up here, though, you can do some things. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm not going to copy that. I want my orientation to be vertical, and I want it to be big. So I'm going to go large, and now I'm going to click on that code. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it over. Notice how the eyes move. Isn't that great? I love Pokies for that reason. I'm going to come over here in my page. I'm going to come down here to the other HTML. Let me slide this up. There we go. Other HTML. I'm going to now paste in that code that I brought over. I'm going to save it. Now, this is where we need to have a little chat. You'll notice, first of all, what am I in right now? Well, I'm in Firefox. So I need to understand the browsers that I'm in. If I'm in Firefox, and when I click on this Save, it comes up. You know why? Because in the Firefox, what I did is I went right up here, and I said, you may allow this plugin, the Flash plugin, to work. And so therefore, every time I put something in here that's Flash, it lets it in. Now notice, going back to our discussions we've had about how to set it up, you can't see it here, but the Vokey is a secure site. So therefore, the stuff you put here is safe. When the first time you do this in Firefox, it's not going to show up. But you know it's there because <clears throat> the gray square is there. So what you have to do is you come up here and you click on this little block, or you click on here, either way, the first time. And you basically look at what it's saying to you. This connection is not secure, so I'm going to click on here. And I'm going to basically, when I jump through these little hoops, and I don't have to do anything, just jump through the little hoops, then what it will do is it will basically then show this little box right here. And now I can say, allow, continue allowing, and everything is happy. So that when I then do a save, it comes in. Now, those of you who are creating your Vokey by going in as you, you have to do one last step. You have to contact me and say, Steve, my Vokey is ready, and then I go in and essentially release it to you. And then the rest of it is just like what I did. You go into your sharing, you grab the embed code, you bring it over here. Now, in Internet Explorer, what happens is there's a little line that pops up down here in the bottom of your screen, and it'll say, should you allow this con content? You always want to say allow content. Okay? And then it'll pop in. Chrome is a little more uh, forgiving. Basically, what Chrome does is it recognizes its flash content from a secure site, and it lets it show up. Now, I say all this to you because what we're going to do next with the uh, GoAnimate, you're going to have to do the same things. And you're set now. If you've got it to work with your Vokey, it is now set to work with everything that we do uh, from here on out. Okay. So let's jump back into the module. And now let's go down and play in GoAnimate. GoAnimate is more fun than a box of puppies. Um, I will be very candid with you and tell you that the problems with GoAnimate is that it is one of those programs that once you get into it, you can sit there and play and play and play. Last week in a class that I had here at UofL, uh, when we did this and the directions were for the students to create a GoAnimate about their journey into teaching, 
Um, as soon as I showed them how it worked, I just had to stop because everybody in the room was lost in Glanimate. I don't mean they were lost because they didn't know what to do. They were lost doing some really cool stuff. So this is the link to use. You're going to click on that link, and you're going to use the same password and username. So it's sbswan02 at louisville.edu with the password of ULIT241. All right, let's make sure we know what we're doing here. So we're going to use the Glanimate to introduce your students to the virtual classroom that you are creating. What's its purpose, promise, and payoff? In other words, why did I create this wiki thing? Well, let me give you a sense. So I'm going to go back to my Glanimate. I'm going to log in with spswan02 at louisville.edu, ULIT241, sign in. Now, as you can see, this thing is full of people using it. If you would like to use it with your class, you are more than welcome to do that. And how it works, I'm just letting you see how many people have used it. How it works is you will log in as me because you know how to do that now. You will set up your class, and you can do it one of two ways. You can set up your class with a generic user like Katie did to hear sewer. So she created a user in here called sewer315 with a password. She would give it to the kids and they then would log in as that. They never got to log in as me. They got to log in with that. And that way then they can work around inside it. And the beauty of it is Katie still retains the moderation ability. And that way anything they create cannot get out to the web unless Katie basically says they can. Now, you have logged in as me. And so you have total control over everything in here. And the thing that we make tonight, or whenever you get around to doing it, uh, is very easy to move over to that wiki space. All right. That's the commercial for GoAnimate. As you can see, as of right now, there is just one teacher. The teacher accounts are horribly expensive. But as you can see, I have only 17 of 100 students being used right now. If you create a class called period one, period two, period three, give that to each of the kids when they log in. Even though they're logging in as the period one, different kids can log in as period one. The only problem you have to worry about is if they log in as period one, they could throw away uh, or mess with one of their classmates. Glenimates. But they can't screw around with the whole structure because you're still the boss. Let's go to work. Let's get that box of puppies out. Make a video. Uh, Glenimate took a lot of complaints from people about how they uh, took away all their school friendly themes. They didn't take away their school friendly themes, they just put it in one location. So we're always going to want to start here. Even though it says business friendly, start here. Click on make a video. When it comes up, over here on the left hand side, you'll see, well, let me back up. When it comes up, it's going to try to make you go through a, a, a tutorial. Eh, okay. You know, if you're a little, little worried about being able to figure this out, go through the tutorial. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to use, and you'll be fine. See? We've, we've talked about what we should call this guy, and none of it is, is very nice. So we're going, to, we're going to ignore him. I have to find the X, the closing out. See, he's trying to make me go through this, and I'm not going to do that. But I can't get out of here until I can skip the tutorial, which I think is located down here in the bottom of the screen. No. Where's the skip tutorial? Here it is. See the little button right here? Skip the tutorial. 
Jeez. All that just to get the guy out of the tutorial mode. And now I'm going to skip it. And he's still back. Go away. And he's still throwing things at me. Left and right. Now, is this just your first time? That's fine. You know, watch how he does it. But I'm going to show you how easy it is. First thing you want to do is look up here at what you've got. These are your backgrounds, scenes, if you will. These are your characters. These are your props that you can put in. This is your text that you can put in. So, like, if you wanted to have, like, this right here, if you wanted to have a title, you could. Uh, this nobody ever uses. It's their, you know, kind of nod to trying to be a, uh, uh, a site for business people to use. But look at there. You can put music in your little video. Here we go. So these are all different themes. And you have all kinds of different themes. Please, please play. Find one that you really like. One of the best ones I ever saw was a guy did a pirate theme. And it was his... Uh, way of saying how he became a teacher. He became a social studies teacher because he didn't know how to use a compass rose. Um, and when he finally found out how it worked, he was so excited he wanted to share that enthusiasm about how to do maps and understand maps uh, with his kids. His was hilarious. This was a really good go animate. Um, you can do travel. You can do. In other words, look at this and decide which one is going to be the best grant background for your description of what your virtual wiki space, what its purpose, what its. Go back and look at it again. Purpose, promise, and payoff. So if I came to your wiki space. What am I going to learn from it? What is its purpose? And what's the payoff? All right, let's just go straight into education. Don't, don't feel like you have to. But once you get in here, what you can see is these are the various backgrounds that you can use. Remember, everything that's in here is customizable. The people, the stuff, all of this is customizable. Well, I'm going to go ahead and drag over the professorial one. Bada boom, bada bang. Here I am. I now am using this as my background. As you can see, the people who are in here, some of them are characters and some of them are placeholders. The easiest way to know that they are placeholders is they don't blink. <laughs> the easiest way to know that they're a real character that you can play with is they're blinking or they're doing something, like the guy over here is pointing to the uh, blackboard. So if I click on a character, I can do a whole bunch of things with that character. But let's just assume, for giggle's sake, I don't like this character. So I'm going to trash him. Goodbye. I can go up here now to the characters, and I can find one that I think represents me, if that character that I just got rid of, is the character that would be the teacher in this particular example. And I would scroll down through here looking for people to use. Let's drag this guy over. OK. Now, notice when I click on him, everything changed over here. Also notice that I can move him around on the screen. I can make him bigger, and you know this is this is the filmmaking part of it. That's fun. So I can make him bigger, so that now he is standing in the foreground. There's still people back here. There's still props, but he's in the foreground. And if you know anything about uh, you know screen and, and filming technique, he's in the grid of threes. And he is the, the important part right here because he's standing there. What can I do with him? When I click on him, this dialog or this box pops up and it says, what do you want to do with this guy? Well, 
maybe what I want to do with him is I want him to move around and do something. I don't know why this is... Oh, I know what that is. Sorry about that. That was to collaborate. So I can actually have him in different modes here. So if I want him to be introducing himself and he's happy about it, I want him to be leaning on that on a podium. Now if I have him leaning on the podium, what should I do? Let's get rid of the podium back here. Click on it. Hit the delete. Now I've got him on a podium, kind of in a aw shucks, hey, how are you? Kind of mode. Dialogue. This is where it gets really, really fun. So at this point, I can either do a mic recording. In other words, I can literally talk into my computer, and it will record over here what he's going to say. I can do text-to-speech. I have to decide what kind of voice I want. In this case, I'm going to go with uh, Joey. But if, as you look at this, you have all these different voices. You know what? I've never used Russell. Let's throw Russell in. And then look, oh my goodness, I can have different dialects. Hello, hello, foreign language teachers. Up here, I'm going to start typing in what well, my little guy to say. Do I want to hear what he sounds like, please? So I'm going to generate a voice. Welcome to my wiki. We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. Okay. If I don't like the way that sounded, could I change it? Well, let's see. Let's go in and let's try... Oh, I can get all cool and have a British thing. Let's see what that would sound like. Welcome to my wiki. We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. Eh, nope. But you get the idea. I can play with different kinds of voices here. Get the one you like. Oh, the Australian ones are who. Let's go back here and probably should go back to United States. No, let's look at, oh, let's do a Swedish one. Let's do a Swedish one. Let's see what that sounds like. Welcome to a new video. We will introduce you to two exploring the exciting areas of technology. No, I don't think so. That one didn't come through very well. So I'll go back to, oh, let's do a Russian Yeah. Okay. But you get what I'm trying to do here. Okay? I'll go back. And I won't use Alex. Let's use Brian. I still like the British voice. Welcome to my wiki. Ah, there you go. We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. And when he does that, he moves his lips. Is that too cool or what? So now I've added that voice. Uh, as I said, if I want to do some other things, in other words, I can have him enter and be, you don't need to do that. Um, you can have him doing actions. So here we are. We've done this one. Oh, wait a minute. i got people back here. Could I have them speak? you darn right you could. And then I've got one here. Could I have her speak? Yep. Could I get rid of this and add another character into the box? Sure. You see what I'm saying about how you, you really can get lost in this thing? Now, I've got one scene done down here. What I want to do is I want to copy it. There's nothing's really going to change. 
And I'm going to throw in another scene right here. And as you can see, the change from here to there, there really isn't a change yet. But that's because what I want to do is I want to go into my second scene, click on my little guy, and now I'm going to change what he's doing with his hands. So now I'm going to put him into this particular pose. Now I kind of lost the podium. Hold on. Go back to having that podium, Steve. So now I can go, let's, let's, you know, I can do that and I can put a podium there, but I'm going to leave that the way it is. I'm just going to go another way. Let's put a kid in here. And let's have that kid have a voice. And I'll do the text to speech again. And this is just something stupidly simple. Just Okay? And whatever I get is what I get. Hooray. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. <laughs> All right. Now let's go over here and... By the way, how much do we have to do, Steve? Two scenes and you're done. Could I do it in one scene? Sure. I'm going to throw a little music in, just because, you know, this is fun. So let's see. What have I got here? I can play it. Yeah. Let's go down here to Creative Mind. By the way, doesn't it sound like every Apple commercial you've ever heard? Okay, let's go down here to Creative Minds. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it. So I'm going to do Creative Minds. Now, I've got... Okay, stop. I've got all these tracks down here. The last one is the one that I wanted. And I've added another accidentally. So no big deal. Just go in and you can delete them. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to drag this one over so that it is at the beginning of my little cartoon. But what I also need to do, whoops, what I need to do, sorry about that, is I need to drag over the endpoint so it matches up with the length of my little scene. This is your scene, okay? So everything that's in here, you see what I'm doing? I'm just clicking on each one of the lines, and I'm telling it to go away because I don't need all that. I just need this. I'm going to tell it to play from the start. I'm going to tell it to play through just the two scenes. I also have a problem with what? It's awfully loud. So I'm going to drop that down to about 10%. Get up and start moving, doesn't it? As I said, more fun than a box of puppies. It just is that easy. As you're working through it, you want to make sure, let me close some of this out, as you're working through it, you want to make sure that you preview it and save it. Okay? Now, can you see up here in the upper right, there's a button that says preview. So let's go ahead and click that. Welcome to my wiki. We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. Hooray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that's pretty weak. But you get the idea. Save now. 
if you go back to editing, which I probably should, no harm, no foul, but make sure you save at some point what you're working on. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to save it. So at this point, I want to give it a title. So I'm going to say, Steve Gets Real. And I can save only. Are you with me? Save only at this time. That way you don't lose it. So if you want to come back to it again, you can. But if you don't do it here, it won't get saved. I'm going to go ahead and save and go to the video page. Okay? We're almost home. It says, where do you want to save this to? Which, which group do you want to post this into? I'm just going back and checking the checkbox. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go ahead and just use the everyone. That's sort of the general basket that catches everything. And I'm going to say, sure, post to that group. Now, because you are in here as me, you have the ability now to share an export. If you set this up to work with kids and they log in, they will not ever see this page. You will be the one who has to say, here, I can give you your uh, little movie you made. Look what it does when you go to share an export. You can download it. Hello. If you have a YouTube channel that you made, now you have content you can upload to your YouTube channel. I, though, all I want is to be able to embed this GoAnimate video into other sites, a.k.a. your wiki. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to copy it. Close. I'm now going to jump back over to my wiki space. Here I am. There's my glorious. And I'm going to click on Edit to be able to work within it. Get my cursor next to the little gray square that represents my Vokey. One, two, three, eh, you know, how, wherever you want it to land. But realize where that blinking cursor is, is where your GoAnimate go is going to land. And you cannot make it land over here or over there. It's only going to land right here. Now, if you want things to be more centered or more collected, you can use a table. Text me. We'll talk about it. Here we go. I'm going to go to Widget, Other HTML. I'm going to now right-click and paste. I'm going to do a save. Save again. And looky, looky, looky. So now I have a Vokey, and now I have the video. You know what? Did that guy ever, when he says well, hooray, does his mouth move? We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. Hooray. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and I love, <laughs> I'm sorry. This, you can tell I love this program. I love the look on his face when he says hooray. All right, let's go back to the assignment for group for module three. We created a word cloud. We used Kentucky Core standards or whatever standards you want to use. We did an introduction to the your uh, virtual classroom. Excuse me, I don't know why I can't think of that. Your purpose, your promise, and your payoff using GoAnimate. Now, mine's a little short, but you don't have to do much more than that. But please play. Enjoy. It's such a fun program. All righty. That's Module 3. We are now complete. Ashley, did I cover the concerns you had about the GoAnimate? Because you had good questions. All right, that's where we're going next. Let's do the YouTube boundaries next. Tell me what your question is, and that way I can kind of get my head around what we're trying to do with the YouTube as well. So, yeah, 
Yes, I do. And I'm going to show you those settings right now. Okay? So when I talk about boundaries in your YouTube, what I'm trying to do is I want to look want you to look at it a couple of ways. Way number one is you can look at it like a teaching tool. So you're using it to bring people into the YouTube channel. And last week I showed you um, Jessica Mulder from JTAM High School who teaches geometry there, who has an amazing geometry YouTube channel. In fact, it's so good. She's now subscribed and is a part of the uh, Teachers Pay Teachers program. The other one I showed you was a young man out at Crosby Middle School, Joe Stivers. Joe is the band director out there. <clears throat> he uses it in ways when he came in and we sat and talked about it. He wanted to do the live events. He wanted to actually send out the performances that the band was doing because the parents of his kids came from all over. So he wanted them to be able to enjoy the performances even though they couldn't be there for the performances. And it's funny, the YouTube setup was so easy to do. The problem was getting quality sound out of the thing. All right, let's jump in. I'll show you the, the three simple ways. If you have an existing YouTube channel, I'm not telling you to go out and make a new one. No, no, no. What I'm saying is you can use an existing YouTube channel, but if you follow this very simple process, it will save you a lot of embarrassment. Creating a YouTube channel is very simple. You basically go to YouTube, and over here, where you can see my little smiling fat face, this is where it normally will say sign in if you do not have a YouTube channel account. As you can see, I do. So the thing that you would have to do is, first of all, the key to getting into YouTube is to get a Gmail account. So that's the hoop you have to jump through. Get a Gmail account. Do you need to make that Gmail account something that uh, you'll be, you don't want anybody to see? Sure, because nobody's ever going to see it. Uh, I make Gmail accounts for classes here, and I call them EDAP585 at gmail.com. Okay? So it's easy enough to do. Once you have the Gmail account, you will click here and you will log in. And as you can see, I'm already logged in. Now, if I want to see my channel, it will show up over here. Now that I've logged in, and I can click on my channel. As you can see, my channel looks a whole lot different than just YouTube. Because I have set all this up. When you don't come into it, there's a place where you can change the picture up here. It can be your picture, it can be a, a school logo, whatever you want. You can come here. Now, understand, there's two ways of looking at YouTube channels. Way number one is that it becomes a landing space for kids. They can come in and you see, here's all your stuff right here. It's all right there. But, no matter what I do, what I want to make sure is the following. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom of my YouTube space. Restrictions mode is on. I click on that and I can either turn it on or turn it off. So if I have it in the off position, guess what? All the crap, all the stuff that makes us cringe, all the stuff that gets parents riled up is now accessible through your YouTube channel. All I gotta do is turn it off. And I do that by turning on restricted mode. Simple as that. And I'll save. Okay? I am now totally, totally safe. And by that I'm saying, if people come to my site, they're not going to see objectionable materials. 
Now, who decides that? Well, it's Google. So, you know, that, that's a little worrisome there, but here's the other one that will save you a world of hurt. Click on History. So now I have the way that Google works is it makes recommendations to you based upon what you've been watching. If you've been kind of being the classic YouTube watcher, you, know, you might wander around. Guess what happens then? When someone watches one of your videos that you've created, they then see the recommendations based upon your wandering around, otherwise known as history. So this is what you do. You go into your watch history and you clear it all. Clear all watch history. Now it won't do that. See what it says? Resume watch history. So if I wanted to turn that back on, I'd click on that. I don't. Now go up here to search history. Clear all search history. Make sure you have that turned off. And the way you know it's turned off, it says, resume search history? Have you just killed it? Nope. Do not do that. That's what I mean by boundaries. And that's all there is, Ashley, really to it. Um, let me go down here and find Jessica's. And again, I talked about this a little bit last week. I think this is about the time when they threw me out when I was looking at um, these amazing people who use these things. As you can see, I subscribe to lots and lots of channels. Well, look, we can look at Crosby right real fast. There's Jess. Let's go to Jess real fast. Jessica has been really, really conscientious about controlling her channel. Notice over here, she has these related, and she's put those in here. If you look at her videos, they're stunning. Um, We're going to talk about this here in a minute. How she does this, let me turn it off. How she does this is she uses the um, PowerPoint because she can get all this uh, math notation in. So she uses PowerPoint and then she just basically films it. So she's creating in the PowerPoint. And you can hear that. Listen. And we're going to be graphing out solutions. So here we have X. Divided by 2 is less than negative 1. So to solve this inequality, since it's being divided by 2. Okay, so she starts talking about what she wants to do, and then you can hear her clicking on things. That's what I was trying to get at. But look over here. Here's all that recommendation stuff. You see anything there that's not related to math? That's how she did it. Exactly what I showed you. Isn't that cool? All right. So that's boundaries for YouTube channels. Now, if you want to go into privacy settings and all of that, that's fine. But here's the thing that I want you to think about. So if I wanted to have my own channel, I'm going to go ahead and steal this from hers. So I would upload stuff into my own YouTube channel that I would want to use. How do you think I would get that over to my wiki space? Because the wiki space is where I really can control everything. You know, I still run the risk of this, you know, something untoward might slip in there. So how do I do that? Right click, copy the embed code, carry it back to my wiki space. And now I can drop it in here. Again, depending upon what it is. In other words, what am I trying to use here? And I go to widget, other HTML, and I will paste, and I will save, and I will save again. 
So I now have the ability to bring things into my wiki from my YouTube channel. It's just that simple. Okay? So let's look at Module 4 for a little bit here. And I'm going to close this down in just a little bit because we can come back to this next week, Module 4. Did we get that settled with the YouTube boundaries, Ashley? Quit calling me sir. Call me Steve. Let's look at Module 4. Irresistibly engaging. Straight out of the full and book. We're going to look at a couple of ways of doing this. Now, screencasting is something that, as a teacher, screencasting is a tool that you have to work with. We can go back to what we saw on Jessica's page in her YouTube channel. And the beginnings of her YouTube is, as she would say, painful to look and listen to. So this is not something you're going to become experts at right away. And I don't expect you to. So let me drop into this module. Let's talk about the first thing we need to, to realize is we need to be careful with uh, doing screencasting because of copyright rules. But this is our out, fair use. Fair use basically allows us to use copyrighted materials because you're a teacher. So by what I'm, what I'm getting at here is if you wanted to do a screencast about how to use the math manipulatives at the NCTM site, it's easy to do. It's very easy to do. If you wanted to do an app smash and put something into your um, voice thread that has copyrighted material in it, you're okay. As long as you don't do the following things. Number one, you don't monetize the end result. In other words, you, you make the screencast, and then you go to a site like Teachers Pay Teachers, and you start trying to sell this creation that you've made. Number two, you may not change the original intent of what someone has created. So you can't go out and find a video, like we're going to show you how to do here in a second in VoiceThread. You can't go out and find a video and put it into your voice thread and then mess with it. In other words, that's not what that should be about. It should be about this. You can't do that. That's a violation. That's it. Now, I put down here some sites that contain nothing but copyright-free uh, Creative Commons licensing. But let me make sure you understand. Everything that's in YouTube, I'll say that again, everything that's in YouTube by default, it is Creative Commons licensing. Let that sink in for a second. So let's do VoiceThread in just a minute, but I do kind of want to give you a sense of screencasting. So screencasting can go a couple of ways. And all screencasting is is exactly what you think it is. It is the ability to capture whatever is on this screen. Now, the beauty of that is, is you can pull up a website. You can pull up a Web 2.0 site that does things. And you can basically film it. Now, I'm going to warn you right now, Ashley, especially since you're here with me in real time. When I start this, I might blow up the Collaborate. But let's give it a whirl and see what happens. So as you can see, when you start Screencast-O-Matic, what it does is it's going to give you a box that you can draw around on the screen as to what you want to record. So I'll say start recording. U.S. English, da, 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 da. And I'm going to launch the recorder. What it's doing is it's basically saying, do I want to use this? Yes. And that would be for the free one. It's uh, the Java. So if your computer is blocking Java, or your browser is blocking Java, I should say, this can get a little hairy. 
And there it went. Oh, we're back. So as you can see now, it's given me a space to record within. And I want to record the entire screen. So I'm going to click on that. But look at what you could do. You could record your screen and your webcam if you want to have your face in this thing. Then you can move it around on the screen where you want it to be. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And it shows you. See? This is where it would show your webcam. All right. Let's do screen. Down here is it's basically saying, hey, I'm, this is how I'm recording. And you can see that it's recording nicely. Good. So I'm going to X that out. Now, I can move this around so that I can get what I want to record in the middle of my screen. Now, again, what can you record? Anything. Anything. And I'm now going to click on Record. Gives you a little countdown so you can clear your throat, take a last drink of water, and off to the races we go. So here we are. It's now recording everything and anything I do. So if I want to go back to here and talk, I could. If I want to go back to my wonderful creation and play it, I have to be careful here. Welcome to my wiki. There we go. We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. Hooray. Got it? So at this point, it's recording everything that's on the screen as well as what I'm saying. And I can move around. Now, I'll tell you where this stands up and just begs to be used is if you've got a Windows 10 computer with a touch screen, oh, my God. It is so many cool things you can do. And it records it all. Jess was using her old TIP computer, you know, the, the HP one that had the touch screen with the stylus. And that's how she makes all of this stuff when she first started out. Then she discovered how much cleaner it looked when she worked with it inside a PowerPoint. But the main tool that she was using is this tool that we're playing in right now. Now, down here, I'm going to head and say stop. If I want to hear what it sounds like, I can click on the triangle. Throat, take a last drink of water, and off to the race as we go. So here we are. It's now recording everything and anything I do. So if I want to go back to here and talk, I could. If I want to go back to my wonderful creation and play it, I have to be careful here. Welcome to my wiki. There we go. We will use this wiki to explore the exciting areas of technology. Okay. <laughs> Got it? So at this point, it throws take a last three go. So now I'm I'm going to say, looks good. I'm ready to go. If you screw up, just stop it and start again. If it's really screwed up, just throw it away right here. I'm going to say done. And when I say done, it's essentially going to give me some choices. Hello, Mr. YouTube channel. Or, if the YouTube channel, I'm afraid that maybe, well, let's see, let's go ahead and do this. Upload it to a YouTube channel. So basically it's saying, what is your YouTube channel that you're going to use? You see, it's showing my account is Steve Swan. So I'd have to go in here and change all this. Okay, that's, that's no harm, no foul. What I can do is I can go here and save it as a video file. And so I'm going to do a publish as a video file. I'm going to tell it where I want it to end up. I'll give it a file name and all that good stuff. So here we go. I'm going to publish it. i got to tell it where to go. Here's my folder. And let's just throw it out here on the desktop. Notice that it works in the background if I want to.
is going to publish it as an MP4 file. Guess what I can do with an MP4 file? I can put it into my YouTube channel. It's that simple. Create, publish, and you'll find my YouTube channel. Here I am in my YouTube channel, and here's this little arrow right here. Click on that. And I can either go find it, or I can just drag it in here. Notice this. You want your YouTube channel videos to be public, so make sure you, by default, they're always public. So now I'm going to go find it. I threw it on my desktop, and Lord mercy. Let's see. If I can find it. I didn't give it a name. That was stupid on my part. There it is. Okay. And go. There. You, are. you can change the name of it anytime you want. YouTube is now publishing that screencast that I made. Isn't that cool? Let's go look at our other friend. So that's screencasting using a tool called Screencast Matic. Um, but what about the voice thread? Well, now voice thread is a very, very powerful tool. And I'm not going to do it justice tonight. So I'm going to come back to voice thread on next Monday night and we're going to give it justice. In other words, we're going to take the time to understand how it works. So what we've done tonight is we've gone back through the Module 3, cleaned up a lot of questions about how to use the Vokey, how to use the GoAnimate, how to set up the Wiki. Make sure that you're reading these things because the links and everything are in here. And the Vokey usernames are in here. You can roll the dice and see if you can log in as me, sbswan02 at louisville.edu, password ULIT241, or you can use your own here. If you use this, you're going to have to let me know that you created it so I can free it for you to see. Because the Voki is working as the teacher is moderator. We look at one of my favorites, the GoAnimate. And could you tell I was really struggling not to go wandering in the GoAnimate? It is so much fun. It is so much fun. We talked about putting the limits on our YouTube channel. There's really not a lot that you have to do to lock it down. Then we started in the irresistibly engaging. We went and looked at screencasting. And the reason why I went there and said a voice thread, because the screencasting is really simple to do. Uh, it really is. And we'll do this next week. We will take the time to show you everything about VoiceThread. VoiceThread is a very deep program. But the beauty of VoiceThread is this. Once you create a VoiceThread, you can move it over to your wiki space. And the ability to comment travels with it. So it doesn't just become a flat, watch this video that I made using VoiceThread. It then also becomes a way of having interactivity from your wiki space. Voice threads are really, really cool. I love voice threads. Um, and then, so we'll take the time next week to really dive into voice thread. Let's look ahead just a little bit so we kind of get a sense of where we are and what we're doing. Um, one of the things that I like about this class is after we got through the sort of heavy lifting of, of SAMR and TPAC and all of that, we're now more into just the fun. Once we got through Fullen's book and the SAMR and all that, now we're into just fun. We're just into making fun stuff. 
So after we get done with the voice thread next week, um, I'm going to jump you into assessment, and I'm going to show you a program that if it doesn't make you go, wow, um, it's called Edpuzzle, and it's one of the best things I've seen. I'll also show you another one called Nearpod. Uh, Nearpod is also one of the best things I've ever seen. Two different programs that do things kind of two different ways, but I want to show you how they work. Then after that, we're going to take the time to do a little programming coding. All we're going to do is use Scratch. We're going to talk about the Bubby, talk about what a digital native is, and then you're done. So I just wanted you to see that we are rapidly, rapidly moving to finality in this class. As always, if you have a question, concern, you know how to reach out. Oh, you love Nearpod? Oh, God, I love Nearpod, too. <laughs> I love, love, love Nearpod. Have you played, Ashley, with Edpuzzle at all? Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and start playing if you want to, but I'm going to tell you, I love. I don't know which one I love better, Nearpod or Edpuzzle. I really need to drag Gabrielle in here. Gabrielle Reed Jasanoff is a PhD student here. She's been my student forever, um, and she really is a Nearpod queen, uh, as I guess you are too, actually. I think one of the reasons why I love about Nearpod is is that flexibility you have within Nearpod <coughs> of developing formative assessment you know, that, that kids can play with. Uh, it also is a really powerful tool in that, unlike Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is pretty much based on uh, multiple, question, multiple choice questions and short answer, whereas Nearpod you can draw, you can do all kinds of things. It is the tool to use if you've got a whole room full of iPads. All righty. I hope you all are enjoying this. I hope I'm pacing it for you. If you have any questions, do not, do not hesitate to yell at me. All righty, I will see you next Monday at 5.30. Bye now. All right, Ashley, before I let you go, did you have anything else that you wanted to ask me? <coughs> okay.